Hi everyone, good if, good evening. Hope you can hear me okay. One more check, awesome. Hey Daryl, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, thank you. All right, well, welcome everybody. Uh, screen and video perfecto, awesome. So we're gonna start out with um, just walking through a uh, simpler um, website and just kind of looking at the tools and scanners and other things that we offer, all the services. Um, and so let me direct my screen to here. And that's how we'll start. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the um, the services that we uh, provide for you. Uh, most likely, we'll probably get through all of them uh, very quickly. So we'll do a quick scan through all of these. Um, but I just wanna make sure that you know that anytime you have questions, you can contact support and you can take a look at our memberships. Um, you can sign up for our free newsletter as well uh, by going to the homepage and putting in your email, if I can get that page. Doo, doo, doo. Awesome, so that's what you get whenever you first go, come onto our website, right? And you can put in your email, you'll get our uh, free daily newsletter and also learn how to trade options, you know, the whole, the whole gambit there. Um, and then once you've, you know, given in or um, signed up for uh, some indicators or uh, these services, we can go in and we can start, let's, you know, the most popular is the start here with options. Um, and then that brings you here. And you can look, we have live trading, trade alerts, daily premium videos. And if you clicked on join now, that would allow you, that would prompt you uh, to your um, seven day trial. Uh, I'm sorry, your one month trial there. And it goes in and in, and we can uh, we'll go over different memberships. Um, we've got Small Account Mastery, which is new, and it's also one of my favorites. Um, that's where John is basically starting out with a small account. He's doubled it, and now we're just continuing to um, you know observe all the practices uh, from that perspective. You know, just having a small account, mastering certain trades to to just completely benefit you um, as far, you know, it's very popular, you know, a lot of people start out with a little 3000 or 6000 account. Um, and this is perfect for that. I believe John started out with, I think it was four or five. Um, and now it's more than doubled. So uh, we've got futures, bias, Fibonacci queen, crypto, and we've got our scanners. We'll run through that here in a second. We've got Simpler Edge. This is the Edge S3 partner. Uh, basically hedge fund data that allows us to see in real time what transactions are taking place as far as, you know, monthly and daily, uh, monthly, weekly and daily shorting or covering. Also gives us the short interest float and really awesome spreadsheet to have every day. Uh, if you wanted to kind of um, put a little bit more perspective behind your conviction, you know, if you have an idea, if you feel like shorting Tesla, right? If you have that inclination, you can look, go into the S3 Edge data and see, well, for the past month, weekly and daily, who has covered and how much covering has there been? Same thing for the opposite side, right? So who's been shorting it and who, how much has been short? And also what's the borrowing fee? Okay, so let's say you've gone in and you're like, hey, I've got, let's go into my membership. That will bring you to this page. Obviously it's going to be me and I have all these, but if you just had the options, it would show you, show you this window, dashboard and trading room, and then we can go into the different options that you have there. Okay, so I won't take too much time just, you know, kind of summarizing these. They're all pretty, um, pretty obvious, right? So Fibonacci queen, you're gonna get, you know, you go to the dashboard, you're gonna have, you know, her sessions throughout the room. You've got daily videos, you've got webinars, you've got the breakout room, okay? And we'll just kind of tour this for a second. We'll go back home and then we'll go to my memberships once again. And a, one of my favorite things um, is to point out the scanner. And so a lot of the question is, hey, how do you look at, you know, how do you find stocks? How do you look at, you know, different underlyings, 
um, that might need attention, right? There could be an opportunity and you see some squeezes or you're not getting enough squeeze. So, you know, we've got all these different ones. Daily bullish nested squeeze is one of my favorite. Um, I like the daily pop squeeze candidate. And these are gonna give you, um, just like I said, the underlying is going to be in a squeeze or it's going to be um, starting one, like in the Genesis first day. And then it'll show you, depending on which, which squeeze that you um, pick, you know, where are we at exactly in the squeeze? So, and we'll talk, we'll, I'll show you that here in a second. You also have the multi-time frame uh, indicator, which is awesome. Um, this is also very easy to use. You've got your example right here at the top and then going out, this is real time. Um, and then of course, learning how to look at that is super easy. And once you get acclimated to that, it can be very streamlined and super easy. Uh, we do have scanner sessions. Um, the in, for all you intraday traders out there, look at all this. You've got 2x nested squeezes. You've got triple squeeze, uh, the 195 minute triple squeeze, which is super popular, right? So Amazon can sometimes get in those triple squeezes. Um, we've got intraday 15 minute bear consolidations. So this is that super tight niche, right? You've got these, if you follow the 15 minute chart, you've got bullish consolidation. Um, nested squeezes again on the 39 and 78 minutes. And so that's our scans there. We'll go back to the home page real quick. This is the member dashboard. And like I said, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to message me and I will see it and I will reply via my voice. Um, and then let's go back into, you know, uh, we're just going across this main line here. And by the way, welcome to Simpler Trading. Thanks for, um, spending your afternoon with me for about an hour. I appreciate that. Um, just going through these headlines here, um, one thing that I do wanna to touch on is we've gone into the different memberships that you have. Um, we also have daily videos for you to take a look at. Um, I do wanna to get to our indicators and then we'll talk about, you know, here, if you, it's very simple. If you wanna check out traders, uh, you can see a whole list of who you will be listening to. Uh, obviously you've got, you know, Big JC, Bruce and Henry, Raggy, Carolyn, Danielle and Eric. You got Allison down there and Sam. So, and then let's go into our indicators just so I can cover all bases here. And a lot of people have asked me recently, like, you know, how, how necessary is it or how many indicators do I need to have, right? And so I always like to give the, the most honest answer is you really have to find something that is not going to complicate you and not going to cause you, um, you know, thwart your decisions. Uh, if anything, these indicators are here to help you find weakness and strength in the markets or any sector. Um, I'm always asked like, hey, what are my favorites? Um, well, I don't really have a favorites. I just stick to my, you know, what I've been using for quite some time. I've added and subtracted over the years, just like everyone else does, right? Um, and at this point, I'm kind of biased. I can use almost anything, right? And so what I do is I just keep it simple. And what, what has worked for me is the squeeze. Um, I also like, you know, any of the, the 10, 10X bars, um, a lot of the tick range stuff is interesting. You can see kind of how the, if the market's selling off or we're gonna continue to get some strength, weakness, that type of deal. Uh, but all of them are really good. Uh, you know, I'm not here um, just saying, you know, hey, pick all of them. Uh, I have, I think each trader is different. Everyone has their own little thing that works for them. Um, but I'm usually with the squeeze and because I use a lot of uh, free indicators and moving averages, I really don't have, uh, you know, I'm not too convicted either way, but I gotta have the squeeze. Uh, but you can go through here and we've got two different pages of indicators, all of them each serve their own little purpose, right? And then you have deep stats tool, which is really cool. Um, it just gives you a ton of information within those bars and it's not so much on your chart, but it's basically showing you, you know, VWAP signals, Bollinger Band signals, um, you know, just a whole slew of things. So you've got weekly price statistics. Uh, yeah, just tons of options to go through. And what's great about these guys is they have a summary so you can just learn more about it, right? 
Okay, so we'll go back to my, my membership, my dashboard. And so we have options, Fibonacci, foundation. And here, I mean, this is what your, your page will look like. Also, um, that scanner, let me see here. Oh, okay, I accidentally skipped over this. So, so the top rate under $10, this is interesting to me. You get a lot of those, you know, smaller stocks that are, you know, that tend to have bigger moves. That's for you guys out there, guys and gals. And so here's an example of how that's looking like. That's what the outline, um, that's the review that you'll get here. You've got short interest, option open interest, and if these do, if these do have a weekly, you'll get three check marks on that as well. So, okay. So also we have a blog post. It's excellent information for you to just get a lot of. You know, we've got. <laughs> I love these titles. I was looking at these earlier. The year of chop. That's nice. The bond market versus the Fed in China. That was a good one. All right, so we'll go to courses real quick. And you'll see that whenever you get to this page, you'll see that you have, you know, this is like an e-learning module, right? So you've got res recipes for day trading futures. And personally, I like these. These are some of the best concentration of information for you um, with the most ease, you know, I think we do a pretty great job of just simplifying things and you've got other different cor other courses that are extremely beneficial. Like I can see two titles right now that would be great um, for beginning traders, like the options defense course. Um, and then, you know, trading psychology, that's a great one. And then of course you can come in here to the left and you can, you know, if you like a particular trader, uh, if you prefer one class over the other, whether it be Ragi and futures, um, you know, anything that's a little bit different, you know, Bruce has his bias class. Um, so all different perspectives that are all pretty, pretty awesome. All right. So that's kind of the website overall, um, just, you know, fairly simple, fairly straightforward. And then this is our, you know, this is the homepage for the different um, services that we offer. And what I did want to go into was futures real quick with Ragi. Uh, Ragi is by far, by far, by far, by far, one of my favorite futures and macro and analysts uh, traders. She's a delight to listen to, and she knows her stuff, gang. So here's what's included. You'll get your memory, you know, of course, you'll always get your Futures Digest. You, it's always recorded, so you'll have an archive if you miss it in the day. Member-only webinars, live trading in the chat room, of course. Trade spreadsheets and trade alerts from Ragi. Got a $7 trial for your, trial for your first month. All right, so we'll kind of exit from the screen real quick and then we'll do, do, do. And before we jump into the markets, um, I'd like to go over, you know, some of the things that I do. And I'll start off with just saying that from the very beginning of my trading and stock um, career, I was seven years old and I was tested on the Wall Street Journal whenever I was a young kid. I'd be going to the office after class and I would have to uh, answer questions about the Wall Street Journal from my grandfather. And from that point, I just kind of had an idea of like, hey, at some point I'm probably going to be super interested in this. This is what I want to do. Of course, I didn't understand the math at, at that point. But since about 10 years old, I started making, you know, um, I guess you could say 
investment decisions, right? But it, I was 10 years old. It's not like I had any uh, stake. I would just be reporting back to my grandfather, right? Oh, I think we should do this, or I think this looks good, you know, that whole game. And so what I've done for most of my life is focus, focused on broad spectrum, you know, uh, identifying things that are inevitable. And my key thing is being early and not wrong, right? So for example, you know, I was in Tesla a long time ago before people were talking about Tesla. I thought that lithium batteries and high, por high performance batteries uh, were definitely going to be, you know, included within the ether, right? At least by 2020 and here we are, right? Um, you know, I was early to uh, taser, I was early to, you know, just a lot of, you know, different like, understanding natural resources, the depletion and abundance of natural resources. Um, I'm actually surprised I haven't gotten into futures as much as I should because I focus on a lot of macro events. Um, I've just really stuck towards, um, you know, options, uh, playing underlyings that I understand and know and that I've been following for up to eight years, right? So, you know, you'll hear me in the rooms talk about AMD semiconductors. You'll hear me talk about, you know, somewhat contrarian plays, buying the dips, um, simple stuff like that. And we'll bring back this window real quick. Just I want to show you all one thing. So we'll go back. And then you see how uh, we have Fibonacci queen and, you know, each group is very, you know, cons um, kind of individualistic. So bias, that's his Bruce income, Bruce's income advisory service, which is awesome. I'm sorry, accumulation system. And then you've got scanners. I just showed you that. We've got a great team following crypto, Sam and Taylor. Um, they are, they are amazing. I always learning from those dudes. Um, like I said, I do the uh, I do the S3 Edge data with Sam and Allison, and I really like that as more like anecdotal, you know, to kind of go, okay, well, I have a suspicion that our directional, you know, we're going to keep going down in Tesla. What does the shorting look like? Okay. And then, of course, you've got Danielle, and she covers Foundation. Foundation is amazing, and she does an amazing job. Um, a lot of good information for starting traders, and it's very, it's she simplifies it so well. Um, literally one of the best teachers out there for creating a foundation and trading options. So here's the simpler edge. You can sign up for it here. Um, it comes in a spreadsheet and then we do the videos and we archive all our videos just in case you missed those. So that's what I forgot to cover. It looks like I've covered all my bases and I want to go into some ideas. I'm just double checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. See, like today. So if like, here's your newsletter and daily video. You know, if you got uh, Danielle's Honey Badger Hunting today, um, you know, this was my favorite title from last week. I believe it was on Friday. You know, Henry, buy all the things. That's awesome. So yeah, I mean, these videos are super helpful. And we've got a great team here, guys. So now that we've gone through that, I've gone, th I've gone through the indicators, I've gone through traders, I've gone through the classes. Oh, and you know what? Here's, this is perfect. So you see that right here where it says strategies, if you only stick to, let's say, butterflies, and let's say you're beginning at options, um, let's see more. Ooh, there's trading psychology. So if we wanted to do, just go to, we've got like, boom, butterflies. Okay, let's see, we've got five classes on that. But you can filter them out, so pretty awesome. I like the bulletproof butterflies one, that's pretty awesome. All right, so once again, we have a bunch of products and uh, some a lot of free stuff, especially with 
uh, memberships, um, archive videos. So you never miss anything. Real-time trade alerts. Live trading in the chat room. You know, you can go back and forth with any of our moderators at a particular time. So, you know, sometimes it'll be, you know, Henry, me and Danielle or, you know, Allison, it just all, you know, randomly kind of closer to our uh, options room time, of course, because we'll be there, uh, but throughout the day as well, you know, we get all of our messages, so. All right, so that pretty much wraps that up. And I want to take probably the next, probably the next 30 minutes and bring you into kind of what I'm thinking uh, for particular, uh, for some opportunities and wanna go over, so I've got this list and this list is basically all underlyings that are within 10% of 52 week highs. Now that's kind of an interesting filter, right? Cause if you look at the markets, we've gotten really volatile. Let's look at S&P futures, we'll pull that up. And so what I like to do is consider the time in which uh, I want to pay attention to options trades. So because I am more long-term, uh, I tend to look out, you know, from 45 days out to roughly three to five months. And I think later on in this year, I'll probably be putting on a little bit more shorts um, come late summer just to maybe get a, just to anticipate a possible move to the downside considering the election, right? Considering where we're, you know, where we are with China. Um, you'll hear me talk a lot about uh, the, the, the real true numbers uh, behind China's GDP or, you know, how they're, um, how they manipulate their currency or, you know, how Hong Kong is over levered and how that's going to affect the overall general picture of China. And, you know, I'm very much looking from the most broad perspective uh, to narrowing down um, and simplifying that. So where can we start with this? Let's start with Tesla. And I have a list of underlines that I'm just gonna run through. We're gonna chart them. Uh, I'm gonna tell you why I'm staying away or why I will get involved. Um, so you're gonna hear both sides of the coin for me. You'll also see me, um, you know, obviously we can't do this right now because the market is closed, but you'll see how I talk about these different indicators that I use. So like I said, I keep it simple. Uh, at the very bottom is our compound breakout tool. Uh, you know, Allison, this is hers and this uh, is super helpful. Uh, we can go into that here in a minute. We've got the ready aim fire and basically getting strong sell or strong buy signals. And whenever you have all three arrows, light blue, magenta, and green, either on the buy or the sell, then you've got a pretty nice indicator there. And it also in that background, it does show you, you know, you're ready, okay, your aim, you've got that sell signal, and boom, you got all three signals. So, you know, and then of course you've got the squeeze. Um, I don't think I'll ever trade without the squeeze ever. And then, you know, just normal volume. I actually take that off. Um, but I think I put it on earlier today for to look at something. All right. So if we go out to a weekly, we're going to just start with Tesla because it's really my favorite, most favorite example right now. We've got bearish momentum. We've got some buying over the past week. And this is on a weekly calendar. Let's go to the daily time frame. And I, I had a class on Saturday with Allison and I used this as an example, this red bar. Um, I'll go ahead and take it off. But I was just basically pointing out that we are heading lower after that poor earnings rate uh, report. And also that we do continue to get stuck right under that zero line. And the zero line is also referred to as the middle line between the Bollinger Bands. So, you know, I've got my 21 SMA in that light blue and this white line, the zero line, is really the 20 SMA, okay? So I am continuing to be bearish on Tesla. A couple reasons why. 
bad news in China is not good for that Shanghai factory that's coming out in, um, in China in 2019, the fourth quarter of 2019. Also, you have a, a continuation of bearish parabolic SARs. That's these red dots. This is a free indicator on TOS. Um, it is showing bearish momentum. Today, even on uh, a day of no, more than normal, higher than normal uh, buying volume, you still have a bearish uh, continuation on the squeeze histogram. And we certainly haven't moved uh, into green zone on the compound breakout tool. Okay, the reason why I continue to be short on Tesla, even though, you know, I really, if you really know me, then you know that I'm obsessed with Elon Musk, rightfully so. Um, and I really hate to even talk about shorting his company, right? But we're using options, so it's okay. We get a, we get a hall pass. All right. So here I am putting on these voodoo lines. This is, uh, we've got a mad scientist by the name of David Starr. And you know, all of our traders really love these and it shows support and resistance. Um, if you can see the red line is called a fire line, the green line is a tree line, and these white lines are snow lines. They act as attractors. The red is probably the most, it's, it is the most powerful one. So you've got main, you know, main support and resistance there. And Tesla, you, we've got a lot of other examples we'll use this on, um, but because it has been in that bearish channel since December, you know, it's just, it's basically using previous resistance and there has been no support, right? So even if we fall through here, right, we're right now we're testing that tree line. And so the tree line could be support or we could fall through and get to this tree line as well. So voodoo lines are actually um, one of my favorite uh, study sets. So uh, I guess it, I guess it uh, is an indicator, but uh, you know, let's use another example. Let's go into, uh, let's do something that's a little bit more bullish these days. Surprise, surprise, Amazon. All right. So look at that trend from this tree line here that gave you a almost a perfect uh, support level at 1618. You had the parabolic SARs continually stay under the candlesticks and we respected the eight simple moving average consistently for almost two months, guys. And we had a false shift on the parabolic SAR. We continued to climb after earnings. And then we started to, now we're finally starting to squeeze out and we're still respecting the 50 simple. So yes, we have sell signals um, across the board with the parabolic SARs over the candlesticks. We have a bearish momentum on the squeeze histogram. Looks like we've switched from blue and now we're just continuing. We've got a sell signal today. Amazon down about 10 points. The market was kind of sluggish today. Um, kind of, you know, giving or taking back some of the losses earlier on in the morning. So if you did uh, go long the SPX this morning, uh, would have worked out for a nice profitable trade. And then also guys, let's check out uh, another good example is Facebook. Um, I love Facebook and the voodoo lines. Look at that. If I zoom out just a little bit. Yeah, so right there at that bottom, it's hard to see, I haven't really, you know what, let's just use a different example. How about that? Let's go to AMD. Okay, and what's AMD telling us? All right, so I've got it nice and stretched out here and we've got, look at that perfect support at that tree line, perfect resistance at this tree line, 2868, and we are coming right below it. We still have on the, uh, on the chart, we are respecting the 50 simple. It looks like today we might, well, it looks like tomorrow we'll be fighting for that top spot of resting above that 50 simple. So interesting that it's, you know, closed down. It's gotten pretty, uh, we took a little bit of a hit today, uh, but I do love this 2615, 2619 level. I've been quoting it for a couple months now. Um, it's just a nice little barrier of support here. So it looks like we are bouncing off of that. And on the squeeze histogram, you know, we're getting 
complete switch today with bearish momentum on the squeeze histogram. So you know a larger than average move is expected and it's coming. It's just taking a while. So right now we're trading within a nice, nice narrow trend. Uh, that pressure has certainly built up and maintained itself throughout this numerous days. So one, two, three, four, five. Usually you need six to eight dots for an official squeeze. And then, you know, usually they let go after that, but it can also take, uh, take some time. Um, and look, on the ready aim fire, you've got complete sell signals there on the daily. So we might be in for, you know, not only going through this tree line at 26, uh, basically base 26, uh, but if the markets roll over, your next major support line for AMD is going to be 22, which is scary because I haven't seen 22 since, I mean, the beginning of this year. Uh, yeah, and then also that's 22 is a deciding factor for AMD. You know, if we're under 22, that is under some major support. So something to consider there. And so let's look at MSCI. Let me just type in something different. China. <laughs> so I thought I had this window pulled up. I'm just going to throw it up real quick in another window and see if I can locate the exact underlying signal. All right, so so this is the uh, China daily. This is the 300 bear shares. Um, a lot of these are ETFs are really interesting to me. You got to be careful. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to cover um, the China uh, ETF is because I'm completely going to be short China probably, you know, starting now or within a month or two from now. Um, there's a lot of macro data out there that supports that China's economy is crashing. If not already, they're just hiding it. I don't know how long that game can continue. Also, I understand on my end of thing that that's quite a statement, right? Um, however, you know, if you, uh, if you consider, you know, how they've been, uh, how the, how their bank practices uh, have kind of fallen in line for the past three or four months or three or four years, then you would know that they are over levered and they're abusing um, a lot of their borrowing power. So in the fourth quarter uh, of 2018, they borrowed $250 billion. Um, external investment is slowing down and has also stopped and reversed meaning there's no outside money coming into China because they are, we're about at that time uh, where the smart money is leaving. And not to mention there was a number, I believe it was 12,000 of the top, uh, the top 12,000 uh, wealthiest, I guess, in China. Uh, I guess 50% of them are majority outside investors, meaning they have not invested in China which is interesting, right? Um, but, you know, overall, I just don't have a reason to be long China anymore. So what am I thinking? What's the, you know, how can I put this trade on? Well, the idea here is, you know, China has a lot of ETFs that are out there and I'm still locating um, that China ETF here in this other window. Um, I will find it, don't you worry. I believe it's the MSCI, yeah. MSCI. All right. So what this is is this is the China ETF for emerging mar um, Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this is MSCI. It's the on the NYSE, and it is the China ETF. What I like about this chart and overall on the weekly is you have for the first time a parabolic SAR shift 
for the past couple weeks. That shows you that momentum is slowing down, right? The first thing that I want to look at is how are we looking with some of these other moving averages and do I have sell signals? Yes, I do, um, but it's not, yep, that is a full sell signal from three weeks ago. So we know that momentum has shifted. Let's go to the daily and look at that potential for potential downside. And look on the daily to where you have a bearish transition in the squeeze histogram. You've got selling. You've got on the daily, we've reverted back to the mean and now it looks like we're gonna go lower than that. Your second deviation, I'm sorry, your 50 SMA target would be 210. So I like coming in here, not only from a macro view with a out to, way out to date expiration shorting MSCI, but also like it on the one to two week frame. Here we are on the daily. Like I said, you need six to eight dots for the squeeze to continue. Look what we have there. We've got some high pressure. We've got green, it's fading green on the compound breakout tool, meaning we could continue to trade within this tight range. You had heavy selling followed by some decent volume, uh, decent buying volume. Also um, on the, okay, I already went over that. So, you know, are we going to have a third deviation move again? You know, that would bring you down to 214. And that would be roughly a, you know, 3% move, right? And I like this over the short, over the long term too. So if I wanted to trade this, let me get my, this out of the way. You know, with these, you can go all the way back to September and December. Yeah, I'm gonna change this to volume. I want to see if there are any contracts being traded here. Oh, that's a vertical. So let's go to singles. And not much there, but this is one of my favorite ETFs to be shorting going into the weakness of China. And on Saturday, I did a class with Allison where I talked about uh, China in depth and went over some of their financials and you can paint a pretty good picture as to you know running a negative 10 percent deficit borrowing 250 billion dollars per quarter consistently for year after year after year you know so that's two major things the third one is exports and imports and the trouble they're going to have there not only just with trade but regulation um, we have a strong dollar you know so those Debt denominated cycles are running late. What, are we, what does Ray Dalio say? He says we're in the eighth year or the seventh inning of the ball game. And it's time to stand up and, and realize some, some things are, need to be serviced, right? Uh, you need to go to the restroom. You got to get some popcorn. You know, we got to service that debt and we're here and emerging markets are getting hit. Um, Europe uh, will most likely be jumping into um, uh, the first phase of their recession. Uh, we've seen slowing down in Australia home sales and California home sales, um, depending on who you are, I guess, or your macro beliefs. You know, those are pretty important numbers and can be good indicators within themselves, um, not to predict the future perfectly, but to follow a seasonality trend. So, okay, so that's with, China, and that's my thoughts on that. And then, of course, there's other China ETFs, and you know, look at Baba and Baidu, right? What have they, what have they done recently? We'll take these voodoo lines off real quick, right? So they've just been completely throwing up, and we knew this by a couple reasons. One, we saw it on the S3 Edge data. We knew that Baba was being shorted in a major way for the past couple weeks. We followed it whenever it was being covered. And we saw this move to the upside in the very beginning of the year. So that's our S3 edge data right there that shows you, you know, hey, 
the shorts are serious and they're holding their position, not only are they holding it, but we can see how much they're adding on a daily and weekly. We have sell signals. We're stacked under, we're under stacked moving averages that have crossed over. So continued, continued weakness. Also today at almost an 8.9 point, point move, that's gonna bring you into that third deviation. And if everything reverts back to the mean, it certainly will, but we don't have any bullish transition yet. On the compound breakout tool, since yesterday you had selling, same thing for ready aim fire yesterday as well. Let's look at Baidu, same thing here. Rolling over, and now you're finally starting to get that third deviation break, we're into all time lows of this year easily and so the question is where will value buyers come in where can you sell some premium with an iv at 58 percent it's going to go back down by the end of may to 44 and then we'll be in the 30s throughout the main part of the summer not abnormal what is abnormal is whenever you see these charts within a quote unquote strong economy. That brings up the question and the statement at the same time, is China fully subsidized? Um, I think so. I think so. This kind of reminds me of an, a good analogy for China and their stocks is kind of like, uh, you know, America and the Federal Reserve. It's kind of like the markets should dictate the markets, right? I, mean, I would think that, you know, most people would agree on that. And from, you know, the conversations that I have with people on a daily basis, I was like, we need to abolish the Fed, right? Well, I don't have a particular opinion on that. I just, you just have to know that the facts are the facts and we do have a federal reserve. But it just reminds me, you know, that's kind of my way of thinking, for better or worse, you know, that the markets move because they have to, not because they want to. And let's look at Baidu real quick. So subject for high manipulation was the point of understanding the Chinese underlyings here. Looks like Toss has given me, we'll just make sure we do this right. Boom, there we go. Um, you know, I may have had that in wrong, MCSI. Yeah, MSCI. MSCI. Mm. I thought it was MSCI. Oh, it's MHCI. My fault, guys. I had it up early. There we go. It's the MSCI China ETF MCHI. You can't memorize it all, right? All right, so, you know, the same principles that I was going over. And of course, here's your turnover. If you started shorting at this first parabolic shift, uh, then that was certainly a nice profitable trade there at the beginning of April. And we've continued to find no support and very, very shaky resistance as well. So we're just continuing to kind of pile over here. Um, Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it, my friend. And on the weekly, you're definitely going to get continued weakness. And on all the indicators, it tells you the same thing. So in the options room, we do have, uh, we'll go back to that real quick.
Um, in the rooms, you'll hear me, t I have a 30 minute segment in the morning between Henry and Allison and you know, everyone just goes over, you know, technicals, we have lists and, we, you know, we've got trades to keep up with, you know, just overall just being fluid with the whole process. Um, what I like to do is do the same thing and I'll come in here with some anecdotal information and kind of like why I'm short Facebook over the long haul, maybe three to six months from now. Why? Well, you can see on the weekly that we have the shift in the parabolic SARs. Uh, you've got bearish momentum on the squeeze histogram, followed up by uh, sell signals on the breakout tool and the ready and fire on the daily. So zooming in just a little bit more, you've got compound breakout tool showing your first daily sell. You've got a continuation of the parabolic SARs and you've got bullish, I'm sorry, bearish momentum on the squeeze histogram. Microsoft is also a great chart. Whenever I look at the squeeze histogram, we've got a bearish squeeze forming. It's only one day, so it's nice and fresh. But going into next week, if this continues, right, we'll have a pure squeeze whenever we get six of those dots, right? Now, whenever I go back into our page, what you can do is you can go in and you can say, okay, I'm gonna go to my membership, I'm gonna go to my dashboard. Now I'm gonna scan for some nested bullish squeezes. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna hit the scanner and it's going to give me daily bullish nested squeezes. And this is updated every day in real time. And you've got, we'll, we'll use BX and Disney as our first examples. So you can see there we've got short percent interest, 52 week range. Does it have a weekly squeeze? And BX does, and so does Disney. So we'll take a look at those and you'll see how you, this is in real time, how you can use the scanner. Okay, so Disney, we saw a daily squeeze. Does it have a weekly? Yes, it, oh, well, it's already fired. Oh, wait a minute, this was to the daily and started, okay. So look at that, you've got a giant move of momentum past that announcement about their streaming services. You've come back down to the zero line and we are getting really close to being under that eight simple moving average, possibly to come down here to the 50 SMA and that would bring you down to 123. You've got the squeeze histogram showing that bearish momentum, ready aim fire and the breakout tool starting to give you more sell signals on low selling volume here today. And then what was the next one? It was BX, okay. Now, you know, does it have a weekly squeeze? It said yes. Um, let's go out to, oh, you know what? That is the wrong one. Let me put, let's try KMX. And we've got the daily, we've got the squeeze formed. This is exactly six days here. And you don't have a shift yet. So you can basically put in an alert or continue to watch this, put this on a watch list. If you do switch over momentum, then that might come in tomorrow or the next day. You do have a little bit more buying here on the compound breakout tool and the ready aim fire indicator with some bullish volume today. Love me some CarMax. Take a look at McDonald's. And that weekly squeeze fired. We'll go into the daily and it's got a continuation of a three day old squeeze and we're still getting some bearish momentum on there. So if you wanted to go back, you can go look at the different scanners that we have. You can go into intraday scans. Here's the, let's look at a weekly bullish continuation. Let's see if there's any on that list. The great list. Let's go to COG. Check this out, this ought to be fun. Look at that, you've got COG two weeks conti <clears throat> continuation. And on the daily, oops, that's the four hour. And on the daily, you do have that squeeze forming. It does look bullish, but like I said, it's a little too early. You've got that switch of bullish momentum there. If you expand that, you can see that perfectly. 
All right. And so that has not fired yet. We're still waiting on three more days of that without a switch. And of course, on the compound breakout tool, you're going to get the same thing, more buying indication there. All right, so let's see. I think that kind of covers a broad view. Uh, we do have also on the side here, whenever you're looking at that, we have Allison's end of day stock picking session here. And that should be loading. There we go. So you've got live access to that with Sam and Allison. You know, it's a plethora of different services, um, classes, indicator, and archives for you. And it's our job here and certainly the fun that we have uh, to make things simpler, to shorten that, shorten that curve, to shorten that learning curve. Um, for me, I like to tell people that my, from day one, like literally like the day I, I started to take options seriously as like a viable thing to do to have it as a profession, I'm pretty certain, you know, I could say two years to be honest, but really, I think it was that third year that I was like, okay, I've got the experience. I've done a lot of life trading. Things are starting to look green. I need to be a little bit more disciplined. I need to be a little bit more ruthless. And also I need to understand the environments. So, you know, a couple things happened and I'll just, uh, I'll sum up the video here, but you know, a couple things happened in my life whenever I was, um, into about that two and a half to three year mark. Um, I stumbled across, across uh, simpler trading. This was so long ago. I stumbled across Mastering the Trade and I read that and it seemed like to be the easiest book to read on options. I kid you not. Um, also, I found the live examples in the book to be just so easy and well described, simple. Um, and then from there, it was just like, okay, well, anything else uh, I need to learn? I surely will. Um, what is that? The party never stops. <laughs> All right. So it looks like I've gone into everything, touched on everything. Uh, so check out our memberships, check out our services. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to support for any questions. You can also email me. Uh, you've got um, you've got the phone number and email for support up there at the top. If you have any questions for me now, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. And Well, if I'm not getting any questions, guys, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Thanks for hanging in there with me for an hour. Um, I'll still be in the background, though, if you come up with any questions or if you have any concerns, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Other than that, like I said, my name is Jack Roberts. I'm one of the trading strategists here, and uh, you, you can catch me in the morning after Henry Gamble and before Allison, and we definitely enjoy what we do. Um, and I certainly do. So <clears throat> all right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Hydrogen. Hey, Hydrogen, I recognize you. You're in the rooms. Awesome. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, guys. Well, I'll sign off from here. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday night. And maybe the markets won't be so sluggish this week, right? Maybe get a little bit more volatility, sell some premium, maybe pin a butterfly at 2,800 <laughs> or, or 3,000. We don't know. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll sign off. Um, like I said, reach out to support if you have any questions. But other than that, have a wonderful night.